Would you trust a doctor less if they used AI to help you? A lot of people say yes. A new survey found that doctors who use AI, like to double check test results or suggest diagnoses, are often rated less favorably by patients, even when the AI improves accuracy. This tells us that people still want to feel human connection with their doctors, even if tech is helpful behind the scenes. It's a reminder that how care is delivered can matter just as much as what is delivered. Meanwhile, over on the patient side of things, AI might finally help us fight back. A startup called Claimable is using artificial intelligence to appeal insurance denials, and it's already recovered millions in care for people who were wrongly denied. If you've ever had to go through this process of appeals, you know how exhausting it is, and tools like this could help level the playing field, especially for patients with complex or chronic conditions who are often denied first while asking questions later. In other news, something small but significant, researchers in the Netherlands have redesigned the vaginal speculum to reduce pain, anxiety, and trauma during pelvic exams. The new version is quieter, softer, and less cold. It's a very simple change, but for so many people, especially survivors or anyone with pelvic pain, it could really make a huge difference in whether or not they seek care. What if your dental floss could double as a flu vaccine? Scientists just showed that coating floss with an inactive virus triggered a strong immune response in mice, enough to protect them from getting sick. They have currently done a couple of preliminary tests on humans, but much more research is needed. But can you just imagine having to learn how to floss the little teeth of the mice in order to actually uh, conduct your experiment. And lastly, scientists have discovered a neurobiotic sense, which is a newly identified system where the gut sends real-time signals from microbes to the brain to help regulate appetite. The bacterial protein flagellin triggers this real-time gut-to-brain communication. Basically, the flagellin in the colon trigger appetite-suppressing signals to the brain to tell you when you are full. This could explain why some people don't feel satisfied after eating. This kind of research could shape future treatments for obesity, eating disorders, and gut-brain diseases. If you found any story I talked about interesting, follow for more. I post these every week. That's it for this week. See you next week.